Hello, so I'm Ashley Brown. I'll be moderating this section and I wanted to introduce everyone here. Um, we've got Tasha, Koku, Jessica, and Derek all here and ready to speak with you. So moving forward, um, I wanna start with today's question which is about interpreting cultural diplomacy and, and how to act on it. So starting with Tasha, you, you shared a lot earlier today in, in our panel sessions about cultural diplomacy and, and how you use it through volunteer work and, and intersecting yourself into culture. So please kind of share a bit more about the how measure. Absolutely. Um, as um, I said before, I am a student affairs professional, so I've been in the field for 12 years and I really take the time to be very intentional about um, immersing myself into cultural experiences and also my students. Um, and so currently what I do is I work with a couple of different nonprofits and I take students with me to completely immerse themselves into cultural experiences. Um, I do a young leaders conference in Haiti specifically that I've done in the past three years. And I think that has been a very um, pivotal and a key um, program that I've developed in terms of having my students to be completely emerged into another culture to see what it's like and also to develop themselves um, while also giving back to another community. Great, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And so I know Tasha just mentioned about, you know, immersing herself into a culture and Jessica shared earlier about an experience of doing just that and I kind of want you to share that with, with the group about, you know, what you did in New Zealand. So. Sure, so um, about a year ago I was in New Zealand. I was at the University of Otago and a group of students I was with and I were invited to participate in a kava ceremony which was celebrating the students who had finished coursework um, learning about the Fijian language. Um, and pr the whole idea of a kava ceremony is to bring people together. So those in attendance all come kind of as individuals with their own backgrounds and histories and leave as one community or as one group. And part of the kava ceremony is um, grinding up a part of a tree root or a pepper root. Um, and it is a slightly narcotic drink, which I learned as I was participating. <laughs> and um, they had told me that my, my lips would go numb and that my mouth would feel tingly. Um, so I was immediately very afraid, very nervous, but there was something incredibly special about the way that the people who were putting on the ceremony made me feel. Um, I felt very welcomed, I felt incredibly safe, and I really trusted that what they were doing was with good intention and um, purely out of love. And so um, I, I did participate in drinking the kava. My mouth was tingly, my lips were numb, um, but it faded and everything was all right. And so I did take away some really important values of being as hospitable as I can be, um, really being patient with others as I'm sharing experiences or introducing people to new things, and then just the importance of community mm. and what that looks like in different cultures and how I can um, replicate that as much as possible in my current practice. Thank you, thank you. Whew. So, I know, um, Koku, you, you shared a lot about your theatrical experiences with cultural diplomacy, and I'm curious, kind of, uh, could you share with us how do you use cultural diplomacy in your everyday life? So as you wake up and you experience just your own community, how are you using cultural diplomacy? Yeah, uh, thank you for asking. I think cultural diplomacy is um, uh, omnipresent in my life, in my everyday life, because I'm originally from Togo and living in Austria. Ah. and uh, making uh, my research at the University of uh, Innsbruck in the research era, cultural encounters, cultural conflicts. Yeah. And uh, theater or art is uh, a tool to deal with uh, cultural diplomacy in a way that we can have a kind of aesthetic, like I said, so you, you form something in a way of forming, presenting, surrounding, yeah. and uh, allowing perceptions to be plural, looking at uh, things from different viewpoints and mm -hmm. making people meet together in such a theatrical situation mm -hmm. and the audience also share uh, experience with the actors on topics on cultural mm -hmm. um, matters and 
as performer and an actor, I do feel myself in this aesthetic situation of theater mm. as someone who is experiencing a new world, a world in a between situation, in a between mm. space. And uh, this kind of aesthetic feeling is, is positive for my views point because the way of seeing things, the way of meeting people, the way of experiencing people, mm. I try to reflect it in theater. And mm. reflecting it, it's making me uh, transforming my viewpoint and people and sharing new ideas mm. as well. Wow. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I know we've talked a lot about very positive experiences with cultural diplomacy. And I'm curious because we all know that when we immerse ourselves into a new culture, there are still some very negative experiences that some people have. And specifically, sometimes the culture that you're immersing yourself in could not want you there. And so I'm curious from Derek's perspective, can you kind of share what does that look like and how should one respond when the community that they're trying to you know, get to know and learn about doesn't necessarily reciprocate welcoming and, and, and hospitable, you mm -hmm. know, experiences with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Actually, I have that experience, yes, since I'm living in Japan uh, from for 20 years. Wow. Yes, I, actually I'm a Japanese descendant, but I'm Peruvian. I'm born in Peru. And, uh, but first when I went to uh, Japan, uh, I went to a public school, a public, a Japanese public school, and uh, we had, like, at first, there was only me, the foreigner in the school. Mm. So it was very, um, I don't know, new for the students. Mm. So they try to be become um, my friend. And, but since I couldn't speak Japanese at all, they began to separate from me, mm. and I felt like um, I felt like uh, I was alone. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, it was difficult at first, but I tried to understand understand Japanese uh, culture, understand my friends, my teacher, and I learned a lot of, from, from them. I also study a lot of Japanese, and mm. at first I tried to be like a Japanese people, a normal Japanese uh, kid. But uh, well, once I spoke uh, Japanese as fluently and I understand uh, their culture, they accept me. Mm. and. Uh, when I was in high school, I realized that I was not fully Japanese, and I and I um, uh, and I realized that I was Peruvian, Peruvian Japanese. Mm. So I built my own identity mm. with that. So I think for for be accept uh, today accept me, it was important to understand them, yes, and also to talk the the language. But at the same time, it's also important to keep your own identity mm. and your way of thinking. Great. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You've all shared wonderful, wonderful experiences. And, and I think, you know, the last question that I think in my brain right now is what's the most outstanding experience that you've had and, and, and something that's truly changed? Like if this experience did not happen to you when you were in your multiple different places and experiencing culture and how to make that work, if this didn't happen to you, when would it be? So, so, so if you could share kind of what your experiences were and we'll go back and forth. Um, I would definitely say when I was 19, mm. um, I went abroad for the first time. I found my own internship. I, even though it's London, it was my first time abroad. Yeah. And that experience truly changed the makeup of who I am um, to experience other cultures. But what I really appreciated is that I was, I was engaging in conversations where people challenged um, my thoughts. They challenged my culture, which never happened before because you're going up in a community of like-minded people. Yeah. And so to really take the time to reflect on who am I who, and who am I in this biggest world, um, it really changed my perception on a lot of things. And that one experience completely opened my mind and my heart um, to the world as a whole. And I've been traveling and experiencing ever since. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jessica? 
I think one of the most outstanding experiences I've had was while I was interning in China. Um, I was out to eat with one of my friends and there was a, a little girl, she's six years old, who was just starting to learn English. And she ran over and began trying to communicate with my friend and I. Um, very broken English, but it was so cute. She had a little snow white dress on. Um, and her family, her parents who did not speak English, we found a way that, uh, to communicate and we were invited to their home for dinner. And being in their home, the mother had some type of phone app that would translate once you typed things in. Um, and so we were there for about six hours just for one meal, um, all home cooked with the entire family present. And the, the patience and the acceptance and just the loving between communicating with the mother and the father and then getting to share in this little girl trying to experience English and talk to people who are from the United States was very, very special. Um, and we talked about when she looks to study abroad in the future, could she stay with us? And, you know, is our home open? And the answer is, of course. And so being invited into someone's home while abroad, where the English was not their first language and very, very broken at that, we used an app, um, was very, very special to me. Great, thank you. Coco? Yes, um, let me say my, the special thing I found out is um, before leaving my country, mm. I had, uh, let me say, uh, images of people abroad on the other side of the sea. But these images we always have, I think they are not always true. They are not true at all. <laughs> when we get in touch with people, experience them, exchanging with them, and we see that it's something else. It's not like you think. It means the fear that something will happen to you, it's just in our minds. We just need to go beyond this fear, approach people, and hear from them, and the connection is built. That's what I experience. And I am now in a situation where when I want to travel to another country, I don't fear at all because I know wow. if you can't speak the language like you mentioned it with the Chinese the, um, hosts mm -hmm. you mentioned, you just need to find a way that other people will understand that's okay, this problem is this person's having problem with the language and you will find a way to communicate with mm -hmm. gesture or all these things also. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I had many experiences since I told to you and I, I went to Japan. I moved to Japan when I was nine, eight years old. So, but uh, at soon, I, I, I felt like I was a member of a Japanese society. And uh, this uh, experience that I had was when I was in the in undergraduate, it was in the third year. Yeah. I um, applied for a scholarship, a Latin American scholarship. Yeah, so. Uh, I belong to this group, and this group was full of Latin Americans. Yes, so that was uh, like a culture shock for me since I, I adapted myself to the Japanese society. It was a little bit difficult to understand now the, the Latin Americans' culture. So, but um, uh, I, I could feel like uh, like I was uh, Japanese and they were Latin Americans and I felt like uh, I was a little bit separated from them but uh, this helped me a lot to be um, to I don't know how to say but to negotiate the culture in terms yeah. you know the, and it, it's helping me a lot now since I'm working traveling a lot for, all around the world uh, to adapt to a uh, culture Yes, even though the Latin American culture is supposed to be my, my own culture, but uh, sometimes it's difficult to go about. But I, that experience helped me a lot wow. to change myself. Yes. Wow. Would you say that you've created a new culture now with mm -hmm. yes, an infusion think, of both? Yes. I think that I, I have the, the fusion of the Japanese and the Latin American culture. Okay. And mm -hmm. would you say that that's a result of the cultural diplomacy? The culture, yes, okay. that I have. You say. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you for welcome. clarifying that. So, well. Um, Thank you. Thank you all for all that you've shared and, and your thoughts and experiences. And I want to thank you for coming to this conference because your experiences is what creates this conference and, and, and the results of what we do. So thank you again. Thank you.